Good morning, everyone. So we learned yesterday <clears throat> this beautiful speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in the beginning of 1992 <clears throat> regarding um, <clears throat> the going of the Jewish people into Egypt and the going out of Egypt and what that has to do with the Mashiach and how it is that we should remember going out of Egypt all the days of our life, including the days of the Mashiach, which this was a statement made in the Gomorrah, in the, in the Talmud, regarding the first day that Rabbi Eliezer ben, Rabbi El Azar ben Azaria was made the head of the Sanhedrin, he was made the head of the judicial body of Judaism, basically he became the head of the Jewish people. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. And his, Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria, he instituted the idea that everyone could come in that wanted to could learn the Torah. Everyone who wanted to. And that was part of his <clears throat> basic principle that he had, that call yamei all of the days of your life, even in the time of exile, you have to remember going out of Egypt, even the lowest times. And even, and not only should you remember just going out of Egypt, but you should also remember and you should bring to the days of the Mashiach. And how tremendously important this idea of doing all we can to bring Mashiach is. And how it's so essential to each and every one of us. And it's essential to Judaism and it's essential to all humanity. <clears throat> we explained a little bit about what this means. Mashiach comes that the whole world will simply feel the creator. Will feel the creator. The Mashiach will be someone like Moses. He'll do the same thing that Moses did. It'll all be strengthening the Torah and encouraging Jews to keep the commandments of the Torah as they're explained by the rabbis in the Talmud. Okay, so now according to all this that we talked about, doing everything we can to bring Mashiach in thought, speech, action, attitude, encouraging others, <clears throat> and assuring us that we have the help of God, that's Elazar ben Azariah. El is the name of God, and Yudke is another name of God. It helps. That's the name of he was the one that, that brought all these ideas to us. And how the beginning of the Talmud is connected to the end of the Talmud. The Rebbe explained it all yesterday. Good. Al pi anal, according to what we said, <clears throat> kol anal, move and we can understand. Be or an explanation. Divrei, a midrash, the words of the midrash, Eil Shemot B'nei Yisrael, a boy in Mitzrayma, these are the names of the Jewish people that came into Egypt. That's how we started this speech. The Torah clearly says, right in the beginning of this week's Torah portion, it lists the names of the Jewish people that went into Egypt. And the Midrash says, Al Shem Geul is Yisrael, it's talking about the future redemption, which is couldn't be further seemingly from the, the obvious truth, that the obvious truth is that the, the beginning of our Torah portion is talking about the Jews going into the first exile and the worst exile when the Jewish people actually were slaves, abject slaves for hundreds of years and they had no Jewish identity, they couldn't do Torah, they couldn't do commandments, the, the opposite of what the redemption is going to be. How can, it, how can the Midrash say that these are the names of the Jewish people? It says clearly that went into Egypt. And it says, no, this is talking about the future redemption. All the Jews are going to be gathered to, to the land of Israel. Afal Piva, another Pashtas Medubar is talking about the going of the Jewish people into Egypt. Why? So the Rebbe explains why. Maskirin Yetzias Mitzrayim Balaylas. We have to talk about going out of Egypt even in the nighttime. What is the nighttime when the Jews went into Egypt? That began all of the nighttime, the nightmares of the Jewish people for thousands of years that are going to come afterwards. 
Nevertheless, all these times that we're in Egypt, we have to mention going out of Egypt. <coughs> the true reason that the Jews went into Egypt, how you read about Hagal is going into the darkness of exile. He is Gulat Yisrael going out. Hari Lahavi Liamota Mashiach to bring to the days of the Mashiach. And you know, meet these Israel, and that's the true topic of going out of Egypt. Can this relate, like we said before, Velochi, and therefore Al Shem Gulat Yisrael, the name of the redemption of the Jewish people, it is mentioned here. In other words, the, this is just the beginning, the, the beginning of this process, which will end with all of the Jews being gathered to Israel physically, but also spiritually and, and emotionally, intellectually. What does it mean going into Israel? Being aware of the Creator, being aware of the Creator's Torah, being aware of our responsibility to the Creator and to the world. To be aware that God, how much God loves us, that's called the future redemption. <clears throat> to be able to repay the Creator by doing the commandments, that's why all the Jews are going to be in the land of Israel. That's in this week's Torah, the Haftarah. That guy, okay, the, the, the big shofar will be sounded. And that God will gather all the Jews one by one. It says, Echad, Achad, Achad, Echad. <clears throat> so this was just the beginning of a process. Ki akavana hi is matzav haboim b'tzrayim. This idea of going into Egypt from Mitzrayim and this Mitzrayim of Gavulim, Yifalu will cause the Yigalu ech shazel. How this is really the redemption of the Jewish people. Ad until. Until the future total redemption it was the beginning of this process going into Egypt. And as painful and as long as it is, but we'll see, it'll be worth it. How I can't, I mean, I can't imagine how it'll be worth it. All of the holocausts and all of this, how it'll be, but somehow or other, Mashiach will make it the whole thing worth it. <clears throat> well, the whole of Tehran, huh? Well, the whole of Tehran. I think it'll be so perfect, we'll forget about the suffering. Uh, here it says that even in the days of the Mashiach, you'll still remember going out of Egypt. That's what the Rebbe said earlier. It's reminding us that we can, if we left Egypt, we can go out of anything. We can go out of anything. And we can even go out of, we should never be satisfied with the situation we're in. The whole idea, the Rebbe said, the whole idea of Mashiach is that it'll make us work harder. It's not Mashiach is going to come and everybody's just going to be in, in the state of, uh, you know, nirvana or something. It'll be, we'll all be uh, attached to to some sort of opiate of the masses, and everybody will just be, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, <clears throat> coasting all the time, right? Just coasting, life is but a dream. It won't be that way, exactly the opposite. The world- no, but, but there won't be any more suffering, so it'll be a lot easier to cling to Hashem and to work on your vote. That's a different thing. That's, that's different. That's different. That's well, different. I'm not sure what you mean. There, there won't be depression and all these other things. That's right. That's right. It's, that's true. There won't be any, any back pain, foot pain. Anything. That's right. But the reason will be, the reason will be, first of all, there'll be more revealed godliness. And the more Hashem reveals himself, the more responsibility we feel to Hashem. Because Hashem is not a person or something. You can just satisfy him and that's it. Right? Hashem is infinitely true. So Hashem is infinitely, that we will want Deeper and deeper levels of truth all the time. That's what it means going out of Egypt. You have to constantly be going out of Egypt. But nevertheless, even now in the darkest times, we have to remember that what we're, our goal is and what we should be striving for is the what Mashiach is going to bring to the world. This revelation of the creator of the world and to the re revelation of our true responsibility and our ability and our ability to fulfill this responsibility. Then we'll really feel human. Well, the Jose for that on the Jewish people of Boy Mitzrayma will be 70 souls. <clears throat> 70 people went to Egypt. Yeshlomar, we can say, this is hinted at Shetokan Avoda that our whole service of God is Shagama Boy Mitzrayma, even when the Jews went into, even going into Egypt, Begalus, <clears throat> the exile among the 70 nations, which that was only really after the destruction of the second temple. She'em can achieve him nefesh, that corresponds to the 70 souls of the Jewish people. Yigalu, <clears throat> at Geulat Yisrael, there will be revealed the redemption of the Jewish people. She'akoach <clears throat> the ability 
to do this seemingly impossible thing, to bring the redemption, to bring the, how to say, true identity of the Jewish people among the 70 nations where we're scattered, this comes from the 70 souls of the Jewish people that came into Egypt. All these 70 people, they are the direct relatives of Yaakov. Yotze Yerech Yaakov. They came from the loins of Jacob. Like it says, Rebbe Lazar ben Azaria, like we said, he said, I am been 70 years old. This gives the power, the ability to maskirin that we can talk about going out of Egypt and we can actually go out of Egypt even in the nighttime. Ad lavili omoto Mashiach, and we can actually bring, our service can <clears throat> bring up and hurry up hasten the, the arrival, <coughs> the revelation of the Mashiach, and all that Mashiach is going to do, the Hasig, at the Ayan, Rabbatai, to get the big Ayan, the letter Ayan of Kriyashma. If you look in the, in the Torah, in Parshat Ve'etchanan, it's like right in the beginning, not the very beginning, but very close to the beginning uh, of the book of Deuteronomy. So there is the, the, the sentence Shema Yisrael. It's the, the, uh, the motto of Judaism. Shema Yisrael. Well, if you look over there, you'll see that the letter of Ayan, Shema Yisrael, Ayan is written big. It's a big Ayan. The letter Ayan is written big. The letter Ayan is written big and the Dalit is written big of Echad. It's written, it's written large. So the, the Ayan, that's the Ayan is the numerical value of 70. And it's also the numer, it's also the word, we talked about this before, the word for eye, eyeball, is an Ayan. This ayin, this is 70 souls of the Jewish people that were direct relatives of Yaakov. This number 70 gave us the power to go out of the exile that we're in, sunk in, in the middle of the 70 nations. <clears throat> and that's why Rabbi Elazar Manazari was 70 years old. And he was the one that talked about this whole thing that we have to bring to the days of the Mashiach. Noten koach. This gives the power that we can mention going out of Egypt even in the nighttime. And not only just mention going out, we can go out of our problems. We can even bring to the days of the Mashiach, which is something totally different than going out of our problems. It's something totally above that. It means going to higher and higher levels of good. So let's say, let, let me take an example. I just popped into my mind, take an example. Let's say you have a person that he's, he's thrown into the, into the, into the, the streets. He's a, a total derelict. He's, a, b, b, the, he's a, a, a drunkard and he's poor and his, all his limbs are all broken. He's in the street. He gets run over by a, 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 a truck, something like that. And it's all of his limbs, all of his bones are broken. And someone takes him and he's just you know gasping for his last breath. And they take him. They bring him to the hospital and they, they heal him. They heal. And they fix up all of his limbs. They fix up all of his this. <clears throat> and this, so he's, what's he, now what's he going to go? Go back to the streets and be a derelict. So they take him and they teach him. They give him a little bit of money. They put him through school and they make him to, to they give him uh, principles in life. And he becomes an honest person, a good person. And because of this person, that could there be anything greater than that? He's all fixed up. He used to be totally broken and now he's totally healthy. He used to be totally poor. He is now he's now he's a future. <clears throat> so they said that's it. He reached the highest levels of. He uh, says one second. Uh, you can get more healthy. You can get more. You can learn learn more. You can be better instead of being let's say a policeman. You can be the head of the police force. You can be a judge. You can be this. But then they say, listen, why not help others? You can go around and help other people that were like you or something like you. Oh, this is all. Then he went out of himself. It's a whole different thing. This is not just going away from being sick. This is going to helping others to be healthy. And then you can say, listen, instead of just helping people that are sick, you know, with broken bones, with this physically sick, what about helping people that are spiritually sick, psychologically sick, intellectually sick? So, so their person is going out of himself. He sees more and more to do. Not only that, he realizes the human personality is infinitely deep. Just to go out of your problems, that's, that's, that's what is that? That's nothing. Right? It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. But that's just the very, very beginning. It's just touching the tip of the, this inverted iceberg, which is called humanity. You can go deeper and deeper inside of yourself. Well, that's what Mashiach is going to do. He's not just going to heal everybody and everybody's not going to be sick. There, there won't be any more bad. There, there's an end to that being bad. Right? There's an end to that. You're not sick. Okay, nobody's sick. Nobody's, what about being healthy? There's no end to being healthy. 
there's no end. Right? Sickness can come to an end, but health, there's no end to being healthy. There's higher levels of being healthy and being aware of who you are, what God is, what your abilities are, what your potentials are. And for this, you can understand, understanding what it says in the Midrash, the, of the, what the Jewish people, about the Jewish people, that they should know, that even when they are in exile, in addition to that, the Jewish people remain, remain existing, and they are completely whole, and it can move in Vapashud like it's understood, right? Mashiach is going to bring all the Jews together, and also the Jewish people, they're alive, they're existing. Come over, and like it says in the end of Parshas Vayechi, Vayechantu Oto Vayasim Ba'aron B'Mitzrayim. It said by Yaakov that they that they buried him, <clears throat> and the Yosef, I'm sorry, the Yosef. And Yosef, it says that they they embalmed him and they put him in a coffin in Egypt. What does it mean, Yechantu, that they embalmed him? Well, that's what they do. You, you, you embalm Jews? Did you don't, you don't embalm Jews? Says that Egyptians did it because that his so his body would remain intact. Hari Elu Shmot Ben Israel Boim Mitzrayim. These are the names of the Jews that went into is into Egypt. Moses, this even adds more. Sha'al Shem Geulis Yisrael Nizkargan. We're not talking about going into Egypt and going into exile. We're talking about the beginning of a process, an amazing, beautiful process that's going to end with. <clears throat> the total redemption. The, and everyone's going to be complete, whole. No Lazayu, in addition to the fact that the Jewish people remain complete in their souls and in their bodies, Bechayim Gashmi, physical bodies, Chayim Ruchnim, spiritual, spiritual, physical life, spiritual life, Gam, also together, Neshama Bria, a healthy soul and a healthy body, Tachlis Tashlem was the ultimate completion. Nevertheless, in addition to that, only the Masab, there will be in a situation not just a movil geula, not just in a situation that brings to the redemption. Eliyaterim is even more geula Yisrael. The Jewish people will be redeemed. Ad kol yamei chayecha leavid yomot Mashiach. Until it'll be all of the days of your life will only be to bring the Mashiach, as we're going to explain. Apiza, according to this, Efshal leavin, we can understand gamas hashayichos, the connection of Shmot to Chavtevit. Chav Tevet is the day that the Ramba Maimonides passed away. That's today. Shechal La'olam, that it always comes right next to Parsha Shmot. And this year it comes, Erev Shabbat, this year, just like it was back then, what, 30 years ago, 31 years ago. Here is this year also the same thing, Parsha Shmot. What's the big thing about the Ramba Maimonides? Well, according to what's known, Shachila the Shabbos, that the food of Shabbos comes by means of the service, by the work we do and the efforts that we make before Shabbat. And who passed away before Shabbat? The Rambam, Maimonides, Moses ben Maimon. Maimon Chazal, like the rabbi say, Misha Tarach Barav Shabbat, one who makes an effort <coughs> and prepares before Shabbat will have what to eat on Shabbat. What comes out before Shabbat this year? The Rambam, the passing away of the Rambam. Now, in Judaism, the passing away of someone is the sum total of that person's life. So it's not necessarily a sad day. Maybe the year that it happens, it's sad. But after that, it doesn't become a sad day. So it's moving, so it's understood, that there's a connection between the halula of the Rambam and the, the, the Rambam is Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. I'll explain who he was to those of you who don't know. The Parsha the Torah to this Torah portion in Shemot, and even more, the the, the eating of Shabbos, the meals of Shabbos that come by means of the work that we do before Shabbat, namely that the Rambam passed away on this day. What does it mean? Just one second before we start. The Rambam, Maimonides, <clears throat> he lived like, what is it, 800, 850 years ago. And he <clears throat> compiled, he's the only person that did, in the whole history of Judaism. He compiled all of the laws of Judaism relating to every detail of Judaism, including the laws of the Holy Temple, the laws of the sacrifices, which that's going to be, Mashiach is going to reinstitute that. The laws of the sacrifices, the laws of purity, impurity, of tzorat, laws that are not relevant now. They're not written in any, any law book. Ben Sora, Remora, and these other laws which are not written. But, so he compiled all this. He compiled all the laws of the Torah, all the laws of the Torah. 
So it says that from Moses until Moses, there was no one like Moses. That's what it says. Me Moshe and Moshe, Loya Moshe. From Moses until what 2000 uh, something, 800 years later, there was no one like Moses ben Maimon. That means all of the prophets, all of the Tanaim, Rabbi Akiva, all these great people, Hillel, that they that, that are called by the enemies of the Jews disparagingly, they're called the uh, Pharisees. Pharisees. These people were geniuses and they knew how to raise the dead. Nevertheless, they were not to the level as Moses ben Maimon. He gathered all of the laws of the Torah and put them all together, including the laws of the Mashiach that no one, he's the only one that deals with the laws of the Mashiach. Right at the end of his work, he has all the laws of what's going to be, who's going to be Mashiach, what's going to happen. Laws, not just philosophy or taking midrashim, there's all these midrashim to talk about. By the Rambam, we see revealed, and, and the interesting thing about the Rambam is that a lot of his laws, he, he first of all set the stage for a lot of, how do you say, debate in Judaism. There were people that were, uh, you know, to, in, in some ways to his level in understanding. So there's sometimes there's debate on what he says, but the laws of the Mashiach, there's no debate. What he says, there's nobody of his stature that says the, the, the disagrees with him. Okay. By the Rambam, by the Rambam, we see revealed, the of the the Rambam, most of his life, by Moses ben Maimon, he was in Egypt. And when he was in Egypt, he was the doctor, the official doctor for the Sultan, for the king over there in Egypt. So his whole life, he was running back and forth, right? And he wrote this amazing book. He had to have a, an amazing memory. And how he got a hold of the manuscripts of the Talmuds, to learn from, because there was no printing presses. Printing presses were invented like 300 years after the Rambam passed away. So he had, he had all these scrolls and he remembered everything. He remembered all of it. It's just an, an incredible. <clears throat> and also he was the chief doctor of the, of the, the Sultan and all of the, the royal people over there. So you can imagine, I mean, he had to know medicine pretty well. If he made one mistake, it would be bad news for everybody. And he was, okay, so the, the Rebbe once said in the speech, there was probably never a person more busy in the world than the Rambam. Every day, and he had problems, troubles, terrible troubles. His, his brother died and his other terrible problems he had, right? He was surrounded by, by, by uh, you know, enemies. <clears throat> anyway, let's go. Boy, Mr. Rambam, Paul Shami caused over there, but often the Shaykh, this Manino, the Inyan of Geulah Yisrael, he called, he brought about in Egypt a certain measure of the redemption. Hein Geulah Ruchne, spiritual or Be'erich Lachoshech, compared to the darkness that was there, but Dugmas Yitzis Mitzrayim, something like going out of Egypt in the nighttime, whether the Koach V'achana for the future redemption. Kamarumas, like it says, that's the Rambam. Rambam is Rambam Rabot Moftai, Rabot Moftai Be'eretz Mitzrayim. I made miracles in the land of Egypt. The Rambam was among in, in Egypt. They were not, I mean, it's a big miracle why the Jews that were in the Sephardic in the, in the Arab states did not suffer like the Jews in the in the um, the European states. There was no like big Holocaust and everything. Not that the Arabs are in animosity to the Jews, especially Islam as much as Christianity does. Okay, we, I don't want to go into a comparable thing with it, but nevertheless, they were definitely the enemies. And Spanish all the times, and the, 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 and the enemies, uh, nevertheless, the Jews did not suffer over there. And one of the reasons why is because they had big tzaddikim, holy people, and the Jews that were there really believed in them. There was no such thing as, you know, the, the, the Scala movement and the other movements. And that came later on, right, much later on. There was no such thing as... Uh, as the intellectual movement over there, like there was in the, by the Jews. Anyway, they believed in the, in, in the, the Rambam really began that. Maimonides, he really began that. He was a tremendously holy person. And amazingly enough, and he was you know, advertised that he was a Jew. Everyone knew that he was a Jew. And nevertheless, not only did, did they not hate him, but they, everybody liked him. And the Sultan, he was, he was pure, he would put his life in his hands. <clears throat> so he changed the whole situation of the Biyota, but Mitzrayim, when he was in Egypt, Chibar Sham, also he wrote, the Rambam wrote his big book, the Mishnah Torah. Sefer Halachos, Halachos, Laws and Laws. Hamakabas, the Torah Shaval Peh, that gathered all of the laws of the Torah. Shezeh Paul Gula, this brought 
the future redemption, but Matzav, the Choshech Halayla, Shel Galos. And he writes over there in the laws of the Mashiach, when Mashiach comes, that all of the other religions, except for Judaism, they'll all be thrown away. They're all lies. He wrote that clearly in the middle of a, of a, maybe one of the most religious countries that ever existed, right? Galos. Kamosh Katuv, like the Rambam writes of Akhtazim, uh, in, his, if, if, in his preface, the reason why he wrote his book, it was 14 volumes, including all the laws of the Torah. The reason he wrote it, in order to lishlol, in order to negate the conceal, to somehow do away with the concealment, the ignorance and, that, and the, the, how do you say, the, the darkness, which is made in learning and understanding the Torah. People were having trouble understanding the Torah. There was a Talmud, the whole sea of the Talmud, and people were starting to get confused. What are the laws? They, people knew what the arguments were, but they didn't know how to decide what, what the conclusion is. The whole Talmud is just arguments <clears throat> between the, 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 the different rabbis. Which one, the law goes according to what? So the Rambam, he decided. The Ain, Mavin, and Yanim, Karoi, people don't understand things completely. A little bit. And in Surah Lomar goes without saying in the Talmud itself. So therefore, the Rambam, he writes, Maimonides, he writes that Lochen Reiti, I saw it's necessary to draw, make a book and put all of the laws together in a clear way, in a short way, that all of the oral Torah will all be arranged and be able to understand all of the laws. And like I say, on the Rambam, there were also big debates, but there were only debates by people who, un, who were to the level of the Rambam. The Rambam, there were people that had different opinions. There was also the Sephardic, the Ashkenazic. The Kach also Nasa Bapoel. The Sefer Rambam, the Sefer Rambam was called Mora Derech. This was a, 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 a guide. The Derech of B'nai Israel for the Jewish people, all the generations, beginning from the Jewish people that were in Egypt in the generation of the Rambam. And from there to continue on, also the laws to also all the different places. Can you do it like it's known from the letters of the Rambam? Allah B'nai Yisrael to the Jewish people and all the generations afterwards. It spread out also to the Ashkenazic Jews. Kolal including the Reboi, many, many books. There were some Ashkenazic Jews that wanted to burn the Rambam. The one wanted to burn genuine rabbis because he didn't bring any sources. He just, and that's what he wanted. He didn't want his book to be a book of, <coughs> he wanted his book to be like a, a, an instruction manual for Jews, how to get laws out of the Torah and how, what to actually do, physically what to do. But what you're, how your tefillin should be, how your mezuzah should be, how your tzitzit should be. Kolomar, which is to say, Sharambam, Paul, Rambam, he brought that even in the nighttime, even in the darkest times, Aravim, in the evening that he was in Egypt, Kapishuto, he was really in Egypt. Mitzrayim, Belashen, Mitzrayim, Begavulim, Tehei, will be, Yitzit, Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt. Ku'ulat Yisrael, the redemption of the Jewish people. Kedugmas Pulas Rabbeinu HaKodesh, like the, like the Rabbeinu HaKodesh, by means, what the Rabbeinu HaKodesh, that was Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, that he lived, what the, he lived hundreds of years before the Rambam. Let's see what, how about, a thousand years, what are you talking about? A thousand years before the Rambam, so he, he uh, the, 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 uh, compiled all the Mishnah. There were all the laws, and Rabbi Yehuda Nasi wrote it down. Kadei in order shalot tishkach, so that the Torah should not be forgotten. The Jews, up until Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, only people that were geniuses that worked all day would remember the whole Torah. It wasn't available to everybody, and the Jews got started getting scattered around. After the destruction of the Second Temple, they got scattered around. They started forgetting laws. There would be one person who would be an expert in one place that he would be an expert on the laws of of Shabbat, another person, the extra laws of Nida, and this, so they, he gathered all together. Karamuz, like it's written in the beginning, in the nighttime. And also the law that we're talking about here, remembering going out of Egypt in the nighttime. So for the Jewish people to exist, it's necessary for the world to exist. The Torah is necessary. <clears throat> the Torah is necessary. The Torah are laws directly from God. At least that's what we claim. Uh, that's what Jewish people have been giving their lives for, for since the Torah has been given 3,300 years ago. <clears throat> the Torah is given by God. Every single word, every single letter is God speaking. God is writing. <clears throat> God dictated to Moses exactly what to write. That's when Moses was on the Mount Sinai. 
for exactly what to write. And if anybody had any doubts, everybody heard God speaking. God spoke to everybody. But notice of al Mazkir and Yitzhak Mitzrayim, including not just mentioning going out of Egypt in the nighttime, the Rambam, my matter is caused that all of the days of your life will be not just remembering going out of Egypt, but also the ability to bring to the days of the Mashiach. Can you do it like it's known that the book of the Rambam has all of the laws of the Torah, all of, so even the laws which are relevant to the time of the when the Beit HaMikdash existed, and also the laws of the days of the Mashiach, which is the end of the book. Shemur, that they, they teach the Jewish people, they, 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 they how do you say, they, they uh, direct the Jewish people to do the laws which are relevant to the days of the Mashiach. Eich tzorich, how it is to prepare for this and the, 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 the order of going to Mashiach, etc. I mean, if, if everyone in the world would read what the Rambam says, at least what Judaism says, what the Mashiach is, so then it would be much clearer to everyone who the fakers are, who is not the Mashiach. <clears throat> so, I mean, we have here, and it's an amazing thing, and we're talking about the truth. Here we have two and a half billion people that believe in someone that claims to be Mashiach, and he has absolutely none of the qualifications of Mashiach. Two and a half billion people are living in a total lie. That's what the, uh, the, uh, Jeremiah says. Mashiach will come and show them that Sheker Nachalu Abutem, that all of the religions are lies. And, the, and there it is stating there right in the in Maimonides. It's been around here open 800 years, including Jews. There's, there's so many Jews that they just that they talk about Mashiach. They have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Just read the Rambam. It's right there. It's so just a few, you know, a few paragraphs. There's all the laws clearly. And no one disagrees with him. At least no one of his stature. Shall Rambam, that the Maimonides, Chai, Shivim, Shana, the Maimonides also happens to be that he died when he was 70 years old. Yamesh Noten of Shivim, Shana, he was 70 years old. Shemur, this shows that he was, the Gili, that it was revealed, the completion which was Haryani Kaben Shivim Shan, like Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah said, I am 70 years old. And he could bring about this thing of going out of Egypt in any situation, whether the daytime, whether the nighttime, and not only going out of Egypt, also even to bring to the, to the days of the Mashiach, like we said before, regarding Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. al Yadua, according to what we said before, oh, are we going to finish, I hope. al Yadua, al according according to what is known, Shabiyom Hilula, the, the, the day of the passing away of a tzaddik, all of his deeds, all of his Torah, all of his work that he did his whole life, they rise up above. They rise up. This shines, and is revealed. So all the work that the Rambam did is revealed on this day. Moving, so it's, this is the, the, today is this is Chaf, Tevet, it's the day of the passing away of the Rambam. Moving, so it's understood, Shabiyom Chav Tevet, that on this day of the 20th day of Tevet, the day of the passing away of the Rambam is found revealed, all of his deeds, all of the Torah, all of his work of the Rambam, when he wrote this book, Mishneh Torah, the repetition of the Torah, and he wrote it in the land of Egypt, and also all the other things that he did in the course of his 70 years of his life. And this will pull Yeshua, this will bring salvation in the whole entire world, but care of in the world, even in Egypt. And the whole world is also called Egypt. But often in such a way, Shazen has said that this becomes a more direct, this becomes directions and <clears throat> instructions for more in Nebuchim to, how do you say, illuminate the, con the confused. They call it the guide to the perplexed, to, 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 to teach the confused. Nebuchim means people that are confused the B'nai of the Jewish people, and all the generations after them. According to this, now we can understand what's the whole novelty of preparing for Shabbat before Shabbat. The preparation for Shabbat is Chaf Tevet, that's the day of the passing away of the Rambam. The preparation, the, the eating, the, uh, the meal that we eat on Shabbat, which is Parshat Shemot this year, is talking about the Jews going into Egypt, which the Midrash says is talking about actually the beginning of the process of going out of Egypt, bringing Mashiach, cave, and, and what's preparation for this? The passing away of the Rambam the day before. 
cave and Shabo all the avoda since it's coming by means of service and the, the difficult by means of work hard work and the cooking and the baking and everything that we have to do before Shabbat shall call Torato, namely what in the Rambam's case all of the Rambam passed away so what is the work that he did all of his deeds and the Torah and his service that the Rambam did in all the 70 years of his life so it's all in a revelation causing bringing salvations in the world on this era of Shabbat right now. So now, so it's understood, Mazem Mosif, what this adds on to this Shabbat, this coming Shabbat, this is Gulat Yisrael, this will certainly bring about the future redemption, now this Shabbat, Boi Mitzrayim Begalut, now we're going to, this Shabbat we're going to go out. Now the Rebbe of course said this 30 whatever years ago, so if it didn't happen back then, for sure it's going to happen now, it's already late, because for sure it's going to happen. It's not that, oh, we missed the, we missed the bus, that's it, no more bus. Mashiach for sure is going to happen. Why it didn't happen 30 years when the Rebbe said that there should be the base of Migdash should have come down from heaven and all the Jews gathered together. Anyway, it's supposed to happen now. But Limud Bahora, what can we learn from this? We can understand very simply. Kavar Dubar was already spoken many times. The words of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, that he's the leader of our generation, should know Saval Zed that in addition to the fact, Shekavar that already Kalu Kalukitsim, that all of the projected times when Mashiach are supposed to come, have already finished. Kavar Asu, we've, the Jewish people have done sufficient returning to God. The Saimu Akal, we've done all the work we have to do. We've even shined up the buttons for the parade for, to receive Mashiach. If so, what's missing? God. God has to open up the eyes of the Jewish people, Shiyiru, to see. Shagula Mitifeshlam, the true. <coughs> The, the com- true and complete redemption, says the Rebbe, it's already here. The yeshivim, and we are already sitting in front of the, the table. <clears throat> the surat Leviathan and the meal of Leviathan and Shorabor. <clears throat> etc., etc. Mizem, move and so it's understood. She'im kavar b'yerida b'mitzrayim. If, when we le- went down into Egypt, thousands of years ago, these are the names of the Jewish people that came into Egypt. It was the revelation of the Geula, like it says in the Midrash, that the redemption was already beginning back then. If at all the times the Jewish people <clears throat> will, will have the ability just to draw this down and to reveal it, right? Even 3,300 whatever years ago back then, when they went into Egypt, that was 3,500 years ago. How much more so after we have all these times have already gone? My say no, and we've done so much service in the time and this 3,300, 3,500 years since the Jews went into Egypt, including what Rabbi Eliezer Ben Azariah did in his time and the Rambam did in his time, what, 800 years ago? <clears throat> Eliezer Ben Azariah, he was like a thousand years before the Rambam and the Rambam in his time, even, even more than that. But call it Siddiqui or Yisrael and all the righteous Jews from all the generations until our last generation, the service of all the Rebbe's of Chabad, especially <coughs> all the Rebbe's of Chabad are connected directly, direct descendants of Beit David, and they're from the tribe of Yehuda, including the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe in the course of his 70 years when he was in his life, Baal Madin. So for sure, Mashiach has to come. How call Shekhe, how much more so? And infinitely more so in our generation. After we've finished everything. So Yeshno, there is of Tacha, we have a true, a certain promise in the Torah. Shabbatach says certainly it will be. Namely, what? The day of going out of Egypt, call Yamei Chayecha. All of the days of our life are to bring to the days of the Mashiach. And as the Mashiach has to come, it has to happen. The Jewish people have to be redeemed. It's not just that, okay, let's give up on it, let's forget about it. Right there, of course, there's always movements in Judaism that uh, say exactly this. Listen, let's just forget about this whole redemption thing. I mean, we see it's just we're just frustrating for nothing. We're just waiting. We're just banging our heads against the wall. Let's just you know forget about it and let's deal with the situation now. You know, we'll protect ourselves. We'll make our, our movement bigger. We'll whatever it is. We'll learn more Torah. We'll go to heaven. That's a good idea. We'll go to heaven. Says the Rebbe, good, good, you want to go to heaven, go to heaven, do whatever you want to. But the main thing is, should always be 
Mashiach is supposed to come any moment. And if he doesn't come right now, you should be tremendously disappointed. But the only way to make him come is to be happy. We, don't, we won't need any decision of the rabbis. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We won't need any, I'm sorry. We won't need any, <coughs> any I didn't say, interruption between what Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah said, call you mechayecha, and the days of the Mashiach. There won't have to be any interruption. We won't have to wait anymore, says the Rebbe. Kamo shahaya, like it was by the Jewish people and all the Jor, Jor, generations before this. We've waited, says the Rebbe, enough waiting. Elokol yamei all the days of the life of every single Jew, physical life, a soul and a body, including the days of should including also the days of the Mashiach should be one continuing belief delay without any interruption. Mikhaven, since that the Geula will come immediately in this instant, in this place, even if it's a, <clears throat> we see that it's a nighttime, things seem to be exactly the opposite of what the Rebbe is saying. Things are getting worse and worse. Kaksha Regach around the last instant of, of exile. And the first moment of the redemption <clears throat> are right now. Should be any second. That's it. Last second of, of exile and the first second of redemption should be any instant. And in fact, the Rebbe said before that even more, that the redemption is already here. In any case, why isn't it being revealed? This is a very aggravating topic to talk about. Because the Rebbe has explained to us how wonderful and good the redemption is going to be and that it's already here. And we don't see it. So how can this be? It doesn't make any sense. So as the Rebbe, just believe what I say. That's what it means, yamei chayecha. All of the days of your life, now, in this place, without any delay whatsoever, even if it was, a person is already 70 years old or even older, every single Jew immediately in the ultimate completion Ruve and Shimon, etc. They went into Egypt. The same Ruve and Shimon will come out of Egypt. In the cause of all the days of your life, the days of the Mashiach, eternal life, which will be then. Unugiel Apoel. Oh, oh, here we go. Regarding to what to actually do. <clears throat> what can we do to, 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 to solve the situation? <clears throat> Shavuot of the Bnei Israel. Now the Jewish people has to be to bring to the days of the Mashiach. The galot kavar to reveal immediately, actually, how it is that the, the when and the when, going into Egypt when they went into exile. Really, the fact of the matter is, all of a sudden, everything will make sense. It'll be geulat Israel. It'll be the future, the redemption. And by means of this, how by means of this, shemekonanim, you have to prepare yourself. And prepare others to the days of the Mashiach. <clears throat> especially the Kesher in Yom Ha'ilula of the Rambam. <clears throat> the Rambam, because the Rambam, he's the one that really talked about, defined, gave the criteria for what Mashiach is legally, according to legal laws of the Torah. By means of what did you have to strengthen yourself and add learning the Mishnah Torah and the Rambam. We in Chabad, we learn three chapters a day. Some people learn one chapter a day. You learn three chapters a day, you finish one in one one time every year. Kolal, including by means of also, <coughs> you can also join or to add uh, the, uh, the, the learning the Rambam with many Jews together, three chapters a day, one chapter a day, or some people just learn the book of commandments of his, which is much shorter. Ubefran, and especially the book of the Rambam itself. The, in the Rambam itself, especially to learn and understand the laws of the the Melech HaMashiach, right at the very end, the two last chapters of the laws of kings and the end of the book of Rambam. Nosof, in addition to that, Limud Bezeh, in addition to this learning, Yid'ag, you should take care, Lashpi Agam, to also influence other Jews around him, men, women, children, in an open verb, Hamido, Talmidim Harba, you should make many pupils, inspire others, that they also became Yirbu, became Mehem, Yiru, became Yasu. Other people also to learn the Rambam, to, to increase in Torah, and mainly to be anticipating and doing everything possible with thought, speech, and action 
to actually bring Mashiach. It's going to happen. It's supposed to happen. That's the, that's the goal. He wrote so maybe God's will. By means of our resolution. In this, Yakablu take of Yad, immediately will receive the reward. What's the reward? The actually the what the Rambam writes about it'll actually be since we already have a Melech Mabes Tavid. There is already the person the Rebbe is talking about himself. We already have a king from the house of King David, and he is learning Torah and he does commandments like King David, and he will come and he will convince and force <coughs> all of the Jews to walk in the ways of the Torah and to strengthen Judaism, and he will fight the battles of God, everything that comes to weaken Judaism or to, to confuse Judaism. Shehu, which is Chazaka, the, the person that does that, he's the Mashiach. Shegavar yem yad Mashiach vadai, and then after that, not just that you can be certain that he's the Mashiach, you can, how do you say, you can be, you can assume that he is the Mashiach, even more Mashiach Vada, he'll actually do the Mashiach, what the things the Mashiach is supposed to do. He'll be certain Mashiach, namely what? He'll, say he will do all these things that he's trying to do that makes him supposed, that you can suppose that he's a Mashiach. You can consider him Mashiach, namely that he tries to educate all the Jewish people. He tries together, he fights all the battles. Okay, he's trying to strengthen all the Jews and he'll actually do so. And he'll build the holy temple. He'll gather all the Jews together to Israel. Be attack and as a olam, he'll fix up the whole entire world. That the whole world will stand together to serve God until it says what? What's the very end of the Rambam? The world will be filled with the knowledge of God, just like water fills the ocean. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let it that be our lesson. Also, the Rebbe also speaks over here about Chafdalid Tevis, which Chafdalid Tevis is the day of the passing away of the Rebbe. I think maybe I must have, might have skipped something or whatever. Chafdalid Tevis, that's the day of the passing away of the first Rebbe of Chabad, the altar Rebbe, and he gathered, the Rebbe says that the Rambam gathered all the, 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 the uh, regular laws of the Torah, dealing with the body of a Jew. And the Alter Rebbe, he gathered all the spiritual laws of the Torah, dealing with the spirit of the Jew. And he passed away on Chavdal Tevis. That's going to be this coming week on what? Yom Sheni. Yom Sheni is going to be this coming week. Okay, have a good Shabbos, everyone. We'll do the Yom Yom. We're going to do the Yom Yom now. And um, I'll answer questions. I see people ask questions. I'll, do, I'll answer the questions in the Yom Yom. Have a good Shabbos with Mashiach now. And now let us learn the Yom Yom together. Mm-hmm.